Hi, um, I'd just like to welcome everyone to today's panel session sponsored by Coursera. Um, today, it's my honor and pleasure to be joined by some esteemed educational professionals to discuss how they're tackling preparing students for the digital workspace, the importance of competency-based learning. So first of all, I'd just like to introduce myself. My name is Kerry Hoochin, and I'm a Partnerships Director at Coursera, working with universities across Europe, um, Middle East, and Africa. But now I'd like to turn to our panelists, and um, I would like to do um, short introductions before we get going with the, um, with the questions. So first of all, I'd like to um, introduce Dr. Bailant Bauch, um, Bauchmann. He's the rector at Budapest Metropolitan University in Hungary. Professor Bailant Bauchmann, DLA, he's a doctor of architecture and he took his appointment as a rector at Budapest Metropolitan University on the 1st of October, 2018. He's been working as a chief education officer and vice rector at METU and has a mandate until the 30th of September, 2023. Welcome, um, by, by, um, Bailin. Um, Daria Maslo, uh, Maslova, um, she is the Director of MOOC Production and the Support Center at the Institute of Distance Education in the National Research Thompson State University. As a Director of MOOC Production and Support for the Center at the National Research Thompson State University, her major is making education more modern and comfortable for everyone. She also trains universities and schools teachers to use digital tools and make efficient presentations. She's also co-founder and member of trainers team in the Non-Boring Report School. Welcome, um, Daria. And finally, um, thank you for joining us, um, Andre Sosikin. Um, you're the head of high performance computing technologies chair at the Ural Federal University. Um, Andre graduated from Perma State Technical University with a degree in electronic computers, complexes, systems and networks. And since 2012 has been working at the Ural Federal University as a professor and head of the high performance computing technologies department. So a very experienced and well-versed panel. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, so first of all, um, we, we've obviously got a number of questions that we're, we're going to, to discuss today, but we couldn't start any conversation without talking a little bit about the impacts um, that COVID-19 has had. Um, that has been with us almost, um, well, formally for almost over a year that we have been dealing with this situation and um, the, the effects of that. And of course, that still continues to be um, something that um, we're working with. So, it, you know, every sector has been dealing with this problem and the education sector is, is no um, different. So first, I'd just like to start with asking you how you shifted from um, one day being of normal face-to-face -face institution um, traditional styles of teaching and learning to the next day fully online and for that to have been continuing for, for over a year. So perhaps I will first throw that question out um, to, to you, Bylint, um, if you'd like to start and, and open the floor with, with your response. Thank you, Kerry, and thank you for the invitation and for the chance to, uh, to talk to this uh, prestigious uh, conference and in this uh, panel. And I'm very curious about uh, my Russian colleagues, uh, about their experience um, and, and achievements in uh, this regard. Um, I just checked in my calendar. It was the 12th of, of March that the curfew was called out in, in Hungary. And I think in many of the European countries, um, uh, the, the, the same date around this date, it has happened. Uh, and the very next day, it was a Friday, actually the 13th. <laughs> Uh, where um, Metropolitan State University, where I'm in charge of, of the academic issues, um, uh, started with uh, with the fully digital online uh, education. Um, we were we were prepared, uh, not just uh, uh, the, the weeks and 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 couple of days before that it was already to, uh, to expect that that uh, um, that it, uh, distance learning and and to keep distance and uh, not to visit the universities. Uh, uh, will be called uh, out by the by the government, uh, but uh, we uh, we started a, um, a full uh, methodological uh, uh, experience uh, and reform 
uh, throughout the whole university. It has 7,000 uni- uh, students uh, with, uh, with uh, 1,000 uh, international students' body uh, among them. Uh, and we, we teach um, uh, over 50 uh, study programs on, or on vocational, lecture, and master level. So it's quite a complex uh, portfolio. Um, and uh, through, through all these uh, study programs, um, in the last three years, we started with, um, with, um, um, with an educational approach, uh, what we called um, um, integrated uh, and portfolio-based education. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the fact that we had um, an overall uh, view about our study programs and the, uh, within this program helped uh, to give advice uh, to, the, to the teachers how to conduct uh, their, their uh, courses, uh, their subjects. Uh, this was the main topic. And maybe just one thing before I give the floor to the, to the other speakers, um, that uh, within this one, one day, we, we uh, discussed and, uh, and made a decision, uh, not just the management, but, but, the, but the, uh, the academia, so the, the, the representative of the teachers <clears throat> and the students, of course, uh, to switch fully uh, within one day and uh, use the uh, the study plan so the our, our uh, daily program as it was planned for this spring semester but in the digital uh, space uh, uh, and that's what has happened fantastic so you had already kind of we're, we're, we're sort of already working a little bit in that arena, but not to the full extent that obviously from one day to the next you had to had to move. So you, you had taken some baby steps previously that then were accelerated into what was the new normal, I guess. That's right. Maybe it's to add that that Hungary as, as a state and, and the uh, mainly state-run um, uh, higher education uh, sphere Meanwhile, my university is a private-run university, but it has some links, and of course, it's governed by the by the, the authorities. Uh, has a fully uh, digitally online conducted uh, uh, system okay. to all the universities and all the students and teachers are uh, connected to, and and it was it was a very useful tool uh, that was was in use before and during the curfew. This is this is the main main uh, platform uh, uh, for communication. Right. Okay. So you kind of had a little head start in some senses. Yes. And um, Andre, uh, was that a similar situation for you in, in, in Russia or at the Ural Federal University or was your experience very different to, to violence? Uh, yes, uh, actually, we have a uh, very similar situation. Uh, even before COVID, we plan to uh, use at least uh, 20% of uh, online education during uh, last year uh, but uh, uh, and we have all required infrastructure all information system and actually plenty of content uh, both in online courses and our uh, learning management system uh, but unfortunately we uh, have to move one hundred percent instead of twenty uh, percent and uh, despite the fact that we we are ready, but uh, we still need to train uh, much more uh, people when we plan. Uh, our professors uh, uh, had to create uh, much more content during a very uh, short period of time, and it was a stressed uh, test for us, uh, but we, uh, I think we did that well. And uh, I have to say that uh, last year I was uh, promoted to a vice rector for academic development and online courses distance education became my uh, primary responsibility. Excellent. So you were technically very ready and 20% was being delivered online. So I guess you're right, you know, for for professors suddenly then to to try to create that content, it does take a little bit of time to, to put it together in a strong pedagogy. But in terms of the students, I guess, how how was their um, how ready were they to move from twenty percent online to to a hundred? Did they find that a big shift, or were they a little more comfortable with that uh, with that change? Actually, it depends. Uh, first and second year students uh, they get used to person to person teaching. Uh, they don't like it, at least at first. Uh, but uh, senior year students, uh, some of them. Uh, 
already had a walk and uh, for them it uh, the distance learning actually uh, is uh, preferred and uh, we conduct a survey uh, so every la last month uh, uh, we plan to go return to face-to-face -face teaching and ask students which uh, method uh, they prefer uh, to continue distance learning or to go to the university and uh, roughly 50 percent uh, stated wow. that uh, they like uh, distance and they prefer to go on with distance learning and online courses. That's, a, that's an incredible statistic. Is that because of the, um, the flexibility it offers them or is that because they live outside of the city and they prefer not to travel in or why would you, um, what would you kind of say were the main reasons for their preference to... to... Uh, the problem that we... Uh, not asked for the reason, and uh, it uh, was a totally surprise for us yeah. because <laughs> we thought that uh, students uh, would like to go back to university and to talk to each other, to their teachers, but uh, they stated that uh, they like distance learning, uh, and uh, we still not uh, conduct the research uh, for reasons. Right, yeah. We, we, we don't know why it's happened. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps this is kind of been, been a way for us to understand that there is a place for both types of education model. And I suppose for some learners, um, maybe they are um, maybe they are juggling um, a full time job alongside their studies. Maybe they have family commitments and it was very challenging for them to be full time students, but they were trying to manage both. And now they've realized that with this more flexible model that they can actually manage their studies a little better. But of course, there are other students, as you say, that really value that on-campus experience and um, the mixing with others. And I guess as young people, they are learning far more than simply their, um, their specialisms at university. They're learning to become adults, learning how to learn, learning about people from different places. And, and you know, that's the value to them. So I think that's actually really interesting statistic you found there and perhaps it presents an opportunity to to run concurrent models to to support all types of learners yeah that, sure yeah interesting and daria daria um how would you um how would you answer that question for um tom's uh, tom's um, state university mm -hmm. uh, yes for our university uh we were pretty sure that we are ready, <laughs> completely ready for, <laughs> for the situation. And uh, even me personally, I was quite excited how, how it is, go is going to be. Uh, because uh, in our university, we started uh, to use uh, digital tools and uh, learning management system uh, since uh, 2013. So we uh, were prepared step by step all these years <laughs> to yeah. 2020. So, but uh, in our university, it is very democratic uh, system. And if you want to use it, we will help you all, all uh, uh, we, we will uh, make all efforts uh, we uh, can uh, to help you. But if you don't have, uh, we don't uh, insist so much. Uh, so, and uh, uh, some of the faculties, so some uh, of the problems were more ready to this than others. Yeah. And uh, if uh, somebody were ignoring us for last years, <laughs> they were going to us uh, last year. So we were helping to uh, make it uh, digital, make it uh, online, and uh, uh, realize all uh, in, implement all technologies to do the programs. But uh, at the end uh, of the last uh, year, uh, we analyzed uh, what what we have finally. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, and uh, we found out uh, that uh, some of the programs, many programs, are not uh, really staffed uh, reasonably. So there are some online courses. Uh, some um, disciplines uh, uh, are going via uh, Skype, Zoom, or some technologies, but uh, there, uh, sometimes there is no link between disciplines, between technologies, and something like this. So it uh, will be uh, good to rethink a little bit 
uh, whole problem uh, with the new conditions, with uh, the new techniques, and 2020 uh, was so rich to new uh, attack startups and uh, technologies and uh, whatever you want you can find now. Uh, so, and uh, we decided that uh, 2021 will be the year uh, when we will uh, redesign our educational programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is uh, again a uh, very democratic. Uh, so, uh, we um, uh, we were just uh, calling everybody who wants, and uh, now uh, we have uh, 17 programs uh, who are redesigning their programs inside uh, with uh, the using technologies, not only online courses or video or other stuff uh, um, separately, but at a whole system. So. Uh, that's that uh, that's what we are doing now right so this is our response for for the last year yeah because i think you know you you're absolutely right um the way the method of teaching um on campus face to face i mean many universities simply replicated that um in an online mode because they didn't or they weren't as prepared and they they just needed to get online and they used tools and just recorded lectures and, and ran it in the same way but as you're, you're rightly saying, you know, delivering a online um, to, to an online delivery mode is a very different um, pedagogy. And I think it needs um, different scaffolding and different kind of ways to, to um, create student engagement and excitement so that the professor isn't simply looking at a sea of blank video names mm -hmm. with, with, with screens turned off. And it, it can be quite... Um, a difficult experience, I, I think, for professors to, to deliver in this way. So I imagine for you in your role as director of, of MOOCs, it has been a, a very exciting moment to, to, to kind of have the spotlight shone on, on some of the work you've been pioneering for a number of years. And, and I guess now the, the shift has come where um, you're, you're much in demand and, and your support and help is needed. So I can imagine that this, this project for 2021 is is, is going to be very exciting um, for you and your team. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just had a, a, I wanted to ask, um, of course, we, we've talked about different models and the, the, the old face-to-face -face model, which was pre predominantly how universities were off operating and you would traditionally have perhaps international students that were um, coming from overseas that wanted to have that online, uh, on-campus on experience it within your within your country or, or your city and I wanted to ask how you've handled international student um, recruitment during this time I imagine most international students have been unable to travel but have you found that there is interest from overseas students to um, <clears throat> to still participate in um, in programs with university with your university and how are you how are you managing that and maybe I'll pass that one to um, Balant first. Thank you. Um, if you're asking about the recruitment, it means uh, yeah. uh, uh, newcomers. So, uh, so the uh, very fresh students uh, who, who already decided to, to study abroad and, and uh, uh, they got in, in a connection with, with the Metropolitan University. Yes, they were, they were uncertain, and uh, I mean, uh, all it happened in, in March, so it was just uh, the middle of the recruitment um, uh, yes. epoch, yes, and, uh, um, and it, it was very uncertain, so maybe now it's March again, we have an understanding what's going to happen in September, meanwhile, no one knows if, if we can turn back to our to a normal life or not, but in last March it was more, uh, even more uh, uncertain. Um, so uh, we try to pursue them uh, to to apply and to plan to start start with the, with their studies, uh, but we offer them the option to uh, we call it uh, passivate, so not to activate the, sep the September semester where they uh, they could could have entered. Um, but um, surprisingly, um, very few of them uh, decided not to take part uh, from September, even. Um, a huge percentage of them, I think uh, uh, around 65, uh, couldn't enter uh, uh, the country uh, yeah. uh, 
uh, till till September. In, in Hungary, there was a, a little bit less lockdown in 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 August, so so many of them could enter. But from some countries, it was just not possible. Mm -hmm. China um, and and uh, uh, and Turkey was was affected for a, for a while. Um, uh, but uh, uh, regarding the numbers, uh, the, the numbers of, of, uh, of uh, newcomers uh, from, from, uh, from an international community was unexpectedly higher than the year before. And for 2021, uh, we expect uh, we, we can uh, rely on the, on the, uh, on the uh, applicant application numbers, how many uh, of the students would, uh, would start. Uh, we have even uh, higher numbers, uh, so it's it's quite quite interesting. Uh, so yeah, really. Young people would like to uh, to go uh, abroad and study international, and 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 I think it's it's a very good uh, sign that everyone is is uh, uh, is, is happy if 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 uh, the normal life uh, comes back. Yeah, still re retaining an international outlook because I guess it's become very easy to become quite insular since we're all locked down and unable to even leave our own towns and cities, let alone leave leave the countries. And it can perhaps maybe give us a fear that you know we, yeah, that's right. we look more internally than than externally. Yeah. Maybe just one, one one other fact that I would I would mention. I think it's important. To, uh, um, because of the fact that uh, that many of our international students uh, couldn't enter, and some of them were, were not newcomers, but but in, in their second or third year, uh, after after a uh, whole year not uh, be able to to go home, uh, uh, they 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 finally traveled home for for the for the Christmas holiday or for the Chinese New Year, and after that they they, they couldn't come uh, come back. So that's why we we decided from the beginning uh, to go fully online. Uh, to have uh, equal uh, uh, possibilities for for all, all our students and for the same for the for the for the local students who, who right. some of them were in curfew in other cities or or because they were they were uh, infected uh, so it was a, a crucial issue and that's why we decided to go fully online yeah so it's kind of a, a level of for everybody who is participating in the same way regardless of where they are yeah Interesting. So I'd like I'd like to turn my attention a little bit to how COVID is affecting the kind of the jobs market and the kind of skills that we're seeing that students are thinking about for for employability. So obviously, it's definitely changed the economy. Many businesses are being radically affected. And, and actually, I think many businesses have also been forced into online capacities, which is driving demand for certain digital skills where perhaps we haven't seen, well, obviously they were increasing, there were skills gaps in those areas. But I wonder if the prospect of economic crisis, which ultimately there will be higher levels of unemployment after COVID, I think we can, we can all expect um, that that will affect every, every country in the world. What I'd like to ask you about your, your graduates and, um, or your, your undergraduates right now, are they, are they very aware of the fact that this is going to affect them? And are they becoming more demanding in the types of skills that they're asking you for alongside their, um, the technical skills or the, 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 the skills they're expecting to learn from their degree programs? And how, how do you think they're going to um, differentiate themselves in the job market? And how do you think their employability outcomes are go going to be affected? And, and, and what are you as a university sort of thinking in a, in a way that you can support those students to face what, what ultimately is going to be quite a challenging time for anyone graduating in the next three to four years, if we're, if we're honest, right? So maybe, um, Daria, shall I first pass to you to, to, to give comments? It's a very big, complex question, but I'd love to hear, um, to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's an interesting question, and uh, this is a part of uh, our redesign uh, program for our educational programs. So, uh, one of the points uh, uh, of redesign is uh, uh, asking uh, our uh, industrial partners uh, 
uh, to join us uh, in two steps or maybe even three steps. Uh, first step uh, is uh, uh, program design. So uh, we are looking for companies, uh, not only uh, education, but industry. Uh, so uh, to help us to uh, design the program. Uh, the second step uh, is teaching. So uh, even a few years ago in 2019, we started to produce MOOCs for our university, but with uh, industrial partners. All the content, uh, content uh, from them, but production is our. So, and it was uh, so um, uh, efficient for us, uh, and uh, it is uh, highly demanded in our university, exactly these courses. So, and they are implemented in our educational program inside. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we are going to make it uh, bigger. So, a uh, whole program, uh, bachelor, master degree, uh, will be uh, stopped with uh, industrial uh, courses, not only even online, but uh, any other types, uh, it is uh, welcomed. So, and uh, the next step uh, is uh, organizing uh, some uh, internships and uh, maybe some projects from uh, companies uh, to our students so they can try themselves in the profession and uh, then they um, can be uh, employees of uh, their company after graduating. So we are, are trying to make this link between our programs and uh, industry. So this is uh, the most important thing. And uh, of course, we are trying uh, uh, in terms of uh, digital skills or any uh, different other skills, uh, we are trying to uh, staff our programs with them, uh, so with the help of industrial partners. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why it could be successful. And we are trying now to, to create this model to scale it to all our programs and whole university. Mm -hmm. That's what we are doing now. I think it's really interesting what you say about industry links. So are the, the industry links and the courses that come from industry partners um, a, a kind of layer on top of the um, undergraduate program. So they, they kind of are uh, complementary to, to what the students are already studying or are they embedded in, the, in each of the degree disciplines? Yes, yes, yeah, it will be this, uh, this way. Right, okay. So they, they're complementary to the, to the degrees. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Andre, at the, um, um, at the Ural Federal University, how would you say um, that, that, that students are kind of, how aware are they of the, the economic effects of, of, of getting employment after university? And how is that affecting what they're demanding of you in terms of job ready education? Are you seeing any trends in that in that area? Yes, sure. Uh, we are uh, very aware of what we will do after graduating and uh, we try to embed in our undergraduate program, we call it uh, project-based learning. Mm -hmm. uh, so our students uh, have uh, not only studied some online courses uh, or, or do some labs, but we have to implement uh, projects and we have to do it during each year at university. And uh, we try to invite as uh, many companies, as uh, much industry partners as we can. So the topics of the projects will not created by university professors, uh, but by uh, companies, uh, industry partners, uh, banks, and so on. And uh, our students are able to, so they have a uh, uh, not uh, job experience, but uh, very similar experience to job where you can try to apply to projects from various companies. For example, they try to participate in project uh, from bank uh, where they have interesting task, but uh, the bank uh, had a huge bureaucracy. We are uh, not allowed, for example, to use their notebooks and Wi-Fi at work. Uh, and after that, they can decide that they will uh, prefer to go to IT company 
with uh, so much uh, less uh, rules and so on. And uh, I think uh, uh, distance learning actually was uh, very useful uh, for because uh, for job skills because most of our companies uh, they also go to remote work and uh, students uh, obtain the similar experience during training or at, uh, during studying at university that they will need exactly the same skills when they will work and. Uh, as far as I know, at least uh, many of our partners from IT uh, companies, they will go on with uh, remote work even after COVID ends. So, I, so you're saying that, that before or that the students actually went into companies to get those, to get those skills. And then since um, the um, many companies now are remote working. You've had to look at different ways to to find um, to get those students that kind of um, more hands on learning side of uh, side of things. Yes, sure. They should be more hands on learning, and they also uh, need to be able to work in remote teams. And when we work uh, at our project-based learning, we do nowadays with distance indication, we do exactly the same. Yeah. Then in the remote teams with uh, remote help from the company, they implement the project remotely. So it's uh, very useful for students. I see, I see. Thank you. And uh, uh, Violet, maybe a, um, a slight kind of um, different angle to the question. Um, how I mean, obviously, you, the students can't get those um, those practical skills. They can't go on the internships. Um, the, the, how are you How are you going to equip them with the with the job ready skills? Um, since they won't be able to have that experience uh, of actually going into the in, into internships and, and experiencing experiencing that. And actually, what skills do you see are are the ones that your students most are asking for? Yes, thank you for the uh, question. Actually, uh, long before COVID, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the labor market uh, complained uh, about the outcome of higher education in, in many ways. Um, some even uh, confirmed that uh, it is maybe not necessary to, to conduct higher education uh, because uh, working force can be uh, can be challenged in other ways and can be prepared for the for the for the labor market. Of course, I don't agree with that. No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> the academia, but we 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 have to take this uh, criticism uh, seriously and and um, and look at listen to the to these uh, uh, to these uh, um, entities uh, like like uh, like uh, Andre mentioned uh, uh, and Aria too. So to comp uh, to uh, cooperate with with uh, with companies with industry partners to have a better understanding about their their approach and, and about their needs and uh, uh, finally this is uh, our interest uh, at the academia to serve their needs uh, by uh, educating our, our students in a in a proper way so that they they will be successful uh, in in their uh, professional life um, so I think uh, it's it's necessary uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 refurbish the, the curricula of the of the uh, uh, particular study programs in a way that uh, these skills uh, we can call them soft skills or or as yes. we wish but yes it's communication it's interacting it's working in a group uh, and it's language skills uh, interaction with with with. Uh, with uh, different uh, professionals, uh, with, with people from dif different uh, culture background, having uh, um, international experience, going abroad uh, throughout the study time. So these are very important. And of course, these all are impacted by COVID and the, and the curfew um, and, and to be locked down. Um, uh, but there are still some tools and they, they are linked to, to digitalization and, and to digital um, uh, content. At Metropolitan University, uh, for longer, we uh, conduct trainings. Uh, so every semester starts with a, with a one-week training for, for, for all students. Uh, 
They are, they are actually, actually quite uh, popular, so they don't have to uh, start learning from the very beginning and, and, and going to the, to the lectures all day. But it is, is more like an interaction with each other and, of course, with the, with the trainers. And it's, it's about communication. It's about learning skills for newcomers. It's very important to, to, uh, to let them know how, how a university works and how they're yeah. supposed to, to learn from the very beginning. Um, and um, um, and with, with, the, with the digital content, I think, uh, we can give, a, give another tool uh, for students uh, uh, to prepare uh, uh, themselves. Uh, but uh, but I think the interaction with the with the lecturers uh, with the, with the tutors we sometimes we call even and, and uh, teachers and lecturers act like tutors to the students and yes the curricula and the methodology has to be changed as well and and uh, project based education yeah. uh, um, interaction with 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 local partners uh, uh, uni- uh, communities and and, <clears throat> and professional partners is getting more and more. Uh, uh, important. Let me mention just one one more topic. Um, our our um, overall methodology uh, uh, project is called My Brand, yes. which uh, uh, which calls out for for the students' own personal brand that they are building throughout the study program. And from the beginning, uh, during these trainings, we try to uh, uh, let them know what are they supposed to do as a young professional. Yeah three or four years uh, of their study time and uh, let them understand that every single uh, skill and, and lecture and, and project work that they are doing, where it fits to their uh, right. scientific or to their professional portfolio at the beginning and then maybe it can be scientific uh, as well. Um, and that's what we call their portfolio, uh, their, their own brand um, and, and they are actually are collecting these, uh, these units uh, to their portfolio, and uh, we even uh, established uh, to the to the final um, presentation. Uh, the final uh, exam is practically a presentation. Mm-hmm. To thirty percent of the final exam note uh, is uh, uh, based uh, upon their uh, portfolio that they collect throughout the study program, and at the end they they present it. and And that's I think it's a, it's it's a good way. Uh, uh, to to let them let the students from the very beginning know uh, what they're supposed to achieve throughout the study programs, and it has a, um, a practical effect that uh, after stepping out the university with that diploma, um, they have already something to show. Uh, so they are uh, kind of experienced uh, yeah. uh, entering the labor market. I think it's a fantastic response to the thing you pointed out when you started talking was how industry is saying students aren't learning the skills that they need during their university education. And often they say that the training is very technical and students don't have those cross-disciplinary skills. But it sounds like what you're doing with the My Brand um, project is actually really focusing students' minds on in the fact that in three or four years' time, they're going to be entering that workplace and helping them to take out of their university education evident and evidence the the skills that they are learning um, that can be transferable into the workplace so I I can see how that would be a very um, valuable thing to have to help them to think early I mean four years maybe seems a long time away but I I do imagine now that that is becoming a little bit into sharper focus um, what they're going to do at the end because obviously the the, the cost of education and the uncertainty of the, the future in some ways so that seems like a very um strong way to 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 do that um because of course we know that students are challenged on critical thinking as andres mentioned project and teamwork or collaborating online these are all skills that are very very transferable um whether that's being used at university or or later in your work life so i, I think that's a wonderful response thank you for sharing um now i'm just aware of the the time and i'd really like to just open up for a couple of questions um, um with the with the audience so if you're in the audience and you have anything specific you'd like to ask please feel free to to type that into the message box now but we already have um a a couple of questions here um and 
So the first one here, it, it, it touches a little bit on what we've already been speaking about, but it's a question I've often um, heard about how you're tackling um, the need for laboratory activities. So I think this is sort of thinking about when um, universities are completely locked down and students haven't been able to come. What are you doing for those kind of, um, you know, those, those, those to recreate um, labs or the more practical hands on skills that are a, such a core and integral part of things like health sciences and those types of subjects. Is there anybody that would like to um, to share their experience? I'll, I will open out to 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 um, any one of the three of you that, that would like to answer that question. It's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll let me start. Uh, it's uh, re really difficult. Yeah. Uh, a good thing that uh, last uh, semester uh, we have uh, not uh, fully distance learning. We were allowed uh, uh, to our students allowed to come to university, but uh, not at uh, full groups with uh, small groups, and most of uh, uh, practical and lab works were conducted at the uh, university. Uh, but uh, we still are trying to create uh, online simulators. For example, now we create a set of labs for uh, physics. So uh, students uh, can uh, do most of their uh, physics labs online. Right. And we also tried to for uh, actually we have a very uh, some uh, not so very many, but some examples with uh, simulators for ex in engineering, uh, such as engineering mechanics. Uh, so students can uh, make exercises and do some labs online. Excellent. And I, 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 I kind of expect that since the COVID crisis has happened, we're finding a lot more innovation in the way that these things can be done at a distance. So perhaps where the tools weren't available before, we're seeing that now the emergence of things to support um, some of those um, experiments and things that students would have done on campus actually can now be done in, a, in, an, in an online context. Um, there's another question and I will uh, move to that now, maybe the final question before we before we close the panel today. And it's a little bit of a reflection on, on some of the things that you've been saying and it poses a question at the end. So um, the, the, the person here, they say, thank you for the interesting presentations. We've realized that online learning was effective in delivering different subjects. And unexpectedly, we realized clear satisfaction from students, which is what you were saying with the online, with the online online mode um, and it, that even that some students prefer online learning so I'm wondering does this mean that we have deficiencies in our traditional learning so have we learned anything how have we changed has COVID this crisis this terrible situation actually brought us to realize that we needed to evolve and have we made learnings that we're going to to keep um, in the future, even if we all go back to a, a, a normal situation where we're free to travel and, and move around at, at will. But I, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on that. Um, maybe, maybe Daria, I'll pass to, to you first of all, and, and then we can move. Um, Thank you. Yeah, this is exactly what we realized uh, at the end of last year. And uh, uh, we realize that education will be never the same as it was before. So uh, redesigning is uh, not, uh, uh, nowadays it's not uh, on our desire or what we are going to, to do uh, only with our Institute of Distance Education, but, but all the programs and uh, plenty of teachers realizing that some tools are useful and uh, education can be different and it needs to be different because uh, students uh, is uh, uh, saying this <laughs> so yeah. open uh, so that's why we are going to to redesign it and make it blended so mm -hmm. it's not only online or offline it it is going to be blended uh, all the programs, uh, but it should be blended uh, reasonable. So, and that's why we are going to redesign it. And this is uh, the new wave <laughs> of education for us. And uh, we hope it will be 
efficient and everybody will enjoy it. So the best of both worlds, really. I, I think you're right, you know, in some senses, the, the sort of online learning piece used to be viewed as the kind of um, sort of secondary type of learning that was in some way less valuable. But I think this um, experience that we've all been through has maybe now given us an understanding that there is a place for online education and it can be coupled very nicely with um, face to face and it can actually enrich the whole learning experience due to its flexibility but also you know the, the modes of um, engaging with different types of content can can be really nicely balanced between the two so um, it, 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 you're right it could maybe be um, the start of a, of a, of a third way um, that, that we haven't um, really experienced before now, sadly, we are out of time for the panel um, today. I wish we had longer because I've been very much enjoying um, the insights um, that you've shared with us. So I would just like to give you um, a heartfelt thanks for, for, for your time and effort in um, preparing for the session today and for, for sharing um, some of your incredible projects, actually, that I'm sure many of the people watching the panel today will, will take inspiration from and um, we'll we'll um, hopefully maybe be able to take um, something out of that to, to support their own universities. So um, thank you very much to, to, to each of you, um, Bailen, Andre and, and Daria. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.